Hi, I'm Jim Ward of the Middle Country Public Library, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode in our History Bites series. Today we will discuss the heroic stand that four Navy SEALs put up during a ferocious firefight with anti-coalition forces in Afghanistan in June 2005. On June 28, 2005, Operation Red Wings took place deep behind enemy lines east of Asadabad in the Hindu Kush of, Af- of Afghanistan. A very committed four-man Navy SEAL team was conducting a reconnaissance mission at the unforgiving altitude of approximately 10,000 feet. The SEALs, Lieutenant Michael P. Murphy, Gunner's Mate 2nd Class Danny Dietz, Sonar Technician 2nd Class Matthew Axelson, and Hospital Corpsman 2nd Class Marcus Luttrell had a vital task. The four SEALs were scouting Ahmad Shah, a terrorist in in his mid-30s who grew up in the adjacent mountains just to the south. Under the assumed name Muhammad Ismail, Shah led a guerrilla group known to locals as the Mountain Tigers that had aligned with the Taliban and other militant groups close to the the Pakistani border. Soaked by a cold rain, the quartet hiked for hours through the darkness as they struggled to keep their footings on the steep mountain ridges. After the sun dawned on June 28, 2005, nearly four years into the war in Afghanistan, the mud-caked seals burrowed themselves behind rocks, logs, and tree stumps on an outcrop overlooking Shah's suspected location. The 29-year-old Latrell, a sniper and team medic, concealed himself under a felled tree when he, when he suddenly heard soft footsteps. Looking up, he saw a man carrying an axe. The seals had been discovered, not by enemy forces, however, but a local goat herder. Within moments, nearly 100 goats with bells around their necks came jingling over the mountainside with another herder and a teenage boy. The surprise presented the SEALs with several options, none of them good. Killing unarmed non-combatants would violate acceptable rules of engagement and also likely result in a court-martial. If the SEALs tied up the three and left them behind, they still faced the problem of what to do with the bleeding bleeding herd without raising suspicions. Dietz, who was in charge of communications, tried to radio headquarters for instructions, but could not connect. Left to make their own decision, the unit released the unarmed men, knowing it was very possible that the herders would, would inform the Taliban forces. It was a decision Luttrell remembered, quote, New could sign our death warrant, end quote. A fierce firefight erupted between the four SEALs and a much larger enemy force of more than 50 Taliban fighters. The enemy had the SEALs outnumbered. They also had terrain advantage. They launched a well-organized, three-sided attack on the SEALs. The firefight continued relentlessly as the overwhelming militia forced the team deeper into a ravine. Trying to reach safety, the four men, now each wounded, began bounding down the mountain's steep sides, making leaps of 20 to 30 feet. One fall shattered three of Latrell's vertebrae. Approximately 45 minutes into the fight, pinned down by overwhelming forces, Dietz, the communications petty officer, sought open air to place a distress call back to the base. But before he could, he was shot in the hand, the blast shattering his thumb. Dietz was shot multiple times during the firefight, and although his right thumb had been blown off in the battle, he continued to shoot at the enemy to protect his unit. As Luttrell hooked his arms underneath the shoulders of his badly wounded comrade to to drag him down the slope, a bullet hit Dietz in the back of his head. He died in Luttrell's arms. Despite the intensity of the firefight and suffering grave gunshot wounds himself, Murphy is credited with risking his own life to save the lives of his teammates. Murphy, intent on making contact with headquarters, but realizing this would be impossible in the extreme extreme terrain where they were fighting, unhesitatingly and with complete disregard for his own life, moved into the open where he could gain a better position to transmit a call to get help for his men. Moving away from the protective mountain rocks, he knowingly exposed himself to increased enemy gunfire. This deliberate and heroic act deprived him of cover and made him a target for the enemy. While continuing to be fired upon, Murphy made contact with the Special Operations Force's Quick Reaction Force at Bagram Air Base 
and requested assistance. He calmly provided his unit's location and the size of the enemy force while requesting immediate support for his team. At one point, he was shot in the back, causing him to drop the transmitter. Murphy picked it back up, completed the call, and continued firing at the enemy who were closing in. Severely wounded, Murphy returned to his cover position with his men and continued the battle and died soon thereafter. Luttrell holed up with Axelson, who had sustained a terrible head wound, when a rocket-propelled grenade blasted the two apart. Luttrell never saw Axelson again. By the end of the two-hour gunfight that careened through the hills and overcliffs, Murphy, Axelson, and Dietz had been killed. An estimated 35 Taliban were also dead. Regaining consciousness some time later, Luttrell managed to escape, badly injured, and slowly crawl away down the side of a cliff. Dehydrated with a bullet wound to one leg, shrapnel embedded in both legs, three vertebrae cracked, the situation for Luttrell was grim. Rescue helicopters were sent in, but he was too weak and injured to make contact. Traveling seven miles on foot, he evaded the enemy for nearly a day. An MH-47 Chinook helicopter, with eight additional SEALs and eight Army Night Stalkers aboard, was sent in as part of an extraction mission to pull out the four embattled SEALs. The MH-47 was escorted by heavily armored Army attack helicopters. The heavy weight of the attack helicopters slowed the formation's advance, prompting the MH-47 to outrun their armored escort. They knew the tremendous risk going into an active enemy area in daylight without their attack support and without the cover of night. Risk would, of course, be minimized if they put the helicopter down in a safe zone. But knowing that their warrior brothers were shot, surrounded, and severely wounded, the rescue team opted to directly enter the oncoming battle in hopes of landing on brutally ha hazardous terrain. As the Chinook raced to the battle, a rocket-propelled grenade struck the helicopter, killing all 16 men aboard. As the sun blazed down, the thirsty Luttrell licked the sweat off his arms until he found a waterfall. As he sipped its cool waters, he suddenly found himself surrounded once again by a band of local men. These men, however, proved to be more friend than foe. One of the men, Mohammed Gulab, assured Luttrell they were not Taliban, and he and three others carried the wounded warrior back to their village of Sabray. Bound by a tribal code of honor known as Pashtunwali, Gulab gave Luttrell food, water, and shelter. Although the Taliban encircled the village and threatened his family and neighbors if he didn't turn over the American, Gulab refused. For four days, Luttrell was shuttled among houses and even into a cave to prevent his capture. Finally, Gulab's father traveled to a marine outpost with a note from Luttrell. The military launched a large co combat search and rescue operation with warplanes and ground forces that attacked the Taliban fighters and brought home their missing man. As Gulab helped the limping seal to a waiting helicopter, an Air Force pararescue man held out his arm to Luttrell and said, Welcome home, brother. Because of Murphy's undaunted courage, intrepid fighting spirit, and inspirational devotion to his men in the face of certain death, he was able to relay the position of his unit, an act that ultimately led to the rescue of Luttrell and the recovery of the remains of the three who were killed in the battle. June 28, 2005 was the worst single-day U.S. forces death toll since Operation Enduring Freedom began in 2001. It was the single largest loss of life for naval special warfare since World War II. For his actions, Luttrell received the Navy Cross in, in a 2006 White House ceremony, and Axelson and Dietz received the same honor posthumously. Murphy posthumously received his country's highest military honor, the Medal of Honor. Luttrell may have been the firefight's lone survivor, but he hardly emerged unscathed. He struggled with survivor's guilt, post-traumatic stress disorder, and physical after-effects in the, in the ensuing years. Quote, I died on that mountain too, he said. I left a part of myself up there. 
I'd like to thank you all for joining us for today's episode. If you enjoyed it, click like. And if you watched on YouTube, hit subscribe. Thanks so much, and we'll see you all next time.